Hello and welcome to the Wiggly Wild Show. So today we're going to make quite a few things. Um, we're going to have a look at some mini beasts, including millipedes and crabs and snails. And then we're going to make a snail finger puppet out of a pipe cleaner and some card. And we're also going to make a hermit crab, which could be, could be a card um, or could just be stick up on your wall. Um, or to play with or to hide things underneath or learn things and facts and um, that's just made from paper and your own beautiful hands and we're also going to make a crawling caterpillar it could also be a millipede depends what you want you could draw legs on it if you want to okay so we're going to start off looking at the real things and then I will show you how to make the um, crafty ones. This is the first one I want to show you. It's a millipede. We can tell it's a millipede and not a centipede from the amount of legs. So if we have a look at, I'll hold him up a little bit, can you see this millipede has got four legs on every line of its body? So we call each line a segment and centipedes different to millipedes, only have two legs per segment of their body. So if you had a really, really long centipede and a really short millipede, the centipede might have more legs. But what we actually go on is the number of legs per line of their body, per segment. And the other big difference between millipedes and centipedes are centipedes are predators. Um, so that means that they eat other mini beasts so they're a bit like lions but very small and um, certainly in this country very small you can actually get them this big so giant centipedes and they can even eat things like bats um, which is very impressive so um, whereas millipedes they eat fruit and vegetables so that's why I'm holding it and I'm not worried and it can't bite me because it only eats fruit and vegetables so we're going to make a um, paper mini beast that could be a centipede, could be a caterpillar, could be a millipede. Um, so you can make it into whichever one you want. Um, and I will just show you how to do that. So for this one, you'll need the piece of paper and a straw and some scissors. And um, we're going to start off by with a, a strip that's roughly the length of half an A4. Um, this one's a little bit over, um, but if it's a bit longer, that's fine. You'll just need to increase the size of your folds. So cut out the strip. If you want to, you can measure it so it's more exact. Um, if you're very neat um, or like mine, you can just do it because actually in nature, you don't get many straight lines, which is lucky for me. So we're going to fold it in half with the coloured side outside. And then we're going to open it up. So we're now on the plain side. And we're going to fold each side in half twice. So that one's folded in half. That one's folded in half. And again. And again. Okay. And then you fold it in the middle as well. And make sure you press down really hard on all of your folds because it really helps to make the shape better. And then unfold it and just check we've got the right shape going on. Okay, so we should have like a like an upside down U shape. Right? Yeah. Now it won't be obvious how it works yet. So just fold it back in exactly the way you've just done it so that it's that one rectangle and then I want you to just smooth round the corners now it's really important with this that you don't go crazy and um, and cut round the whole thing because you don't want to cut off your folds because um, part of the key of this is having the folds here okay and by making it rounded, it just looks a bit more like a caterpillar or millipede. Just looks a bit more natural because like I said, there's no real straight lines in nature. So we're going to have a nice curvy, colourful caterpillar here. Right. 
And again, it still doesn't look much like a caterpillar yet or, or a millipede or a centipede because it hasn't got any feelers and it hasn't got any eyes. So you can make this so you can either add in some paper paper feelers, some paper antenna. Um, so use some glue and you can, again, you can use PVA, you can use Pritt stick, whatever you've got lying around and you can also stick on some eyes so i'm going to i think i'm going to have some orange eyes and i'm just going to cut them out and then i'm going to draw on my eyes in the middle but this would work much better with googly eyes if you have such lucky things okay and then you can see it looks much more like a caterpillar now doesn't it and then what you will need to do is you'll need to put your little caterpillar on his end feet there and his end head and then you get the straw and this works better on the surface with a little bit of grip so not something slidey and you just aim it and then if someone else has made one as well so maybe your carer or your mum and dad or a sibling like your brother or sister then you can have races as well. So see, you've got to make them crawl properly though. You can't just blow them away the whole time. That's cheating. You have to make them crawl properly with the straw and then see who wins. So this little shelled mini beast is a purple pincer land hermit crab. And we can tell because he's got a big purple pincer there. Um, so they have, like I said, 10 legs. But actually two of the legs have been adapted into claws, into pincers. And he uses the big claw to hold things with. And the little claw more like a fork to pick things off with. And they are scavengers. Um, they will also eat live things sometimes. So sometimes they can be predators. Um, but they will more likely like to pick up things that have washed up on the beach. And they use the shell of other mini beasts. So... Any guesses as to what mini beast that might be from? It's from an old sea snail. So when we find shells on the beach, those are different kinds of sea snails, um, like winkles and periwinkles and um, limpets, things like that. And, um, and they're all mollusks, um, but obviously the crab is not a mollusk. We can see it's very, very hard. It's got a hard exoskeleton that's made out of a shell as well. So he used uses lots of calcium to make his skin um, but this shell is borrowed to give him some extra protection so that's why he's called a hermit crab whereas the other crabs that you see are just crabs um, so you don't have the hermit bit on the front and they do have to change their shell every time they get too big for it so often that is just after they've shed their skin because like the other mini beasts they have to molt they have to shed their skin um, because it doesn't stretch and then they have to find a new, slightly bigger shell. So I have got a link in the other YouTube videos to the Hermit Crab Housing Exchange, um, which is footage from the Beeb. And um, that's brilliant footage to show you how the Hermit Crabs line up in size order to all switch their shells. And if you look very closely, when they move, they look very strange because the back end of their body is very, very skinny. And the four legs that we cannot see are actually very, very tiny legs that are pretty much just used for holding on the shell. And that's why they're not attached to their shell, but that's how they can move their shell and change it when they need to. And you can see he's also got antennae, um, like other mini beasts that we've met, um, but he's got four feelers. So not just the two antennae, he's also got two extra ones which are used for smelling and for tasting. Um, so that's a bit special for crabs and if he's looking at you nice and properly you might be able to see that his eyes are on stalks so although they cut they're not the best eyes um he can look around a bit more than we can because 
they can move independently so you can look one eye that way and one eye that way. So we're going to make a hermit crab out of paper and we're going to use our hands for this one. So I've got it pointing at the at the paper so that you can see what I need to do. Hopefully your hand's going to be a little smaller than mine because mine's going to take up most of this bit of paper. So if you've got an A4 piece of paper and it can be any colour, I've chosen pink because it looks a bit more like my crab, you just need to... So best to draw around the same hand twice. And now you need to cut around them. So you might need some help with this bit. Now you need to glue them together. So you need to glue both yours together at the back. So let's, I'm using a hot glue gun, but you can use PVA or whatever you would normally use at school. And make sure you put some newspaper down or something if you're doing this on the kitchen table. And you'll have something that looks so like you need that. to get another piece of paper, preferably a different color and you need to make sure that the half of your shell that you're going to use is about the size of your palm. So obviously mine's going to be quite big. So we're gonna have it about there. Okay, so make sure your palm covers it because this is going to be the shell of our crab. So we're going to have a kind of triangle shape. So wherever it stops, fold that bit over, there we go. And then you can draw around it so that you know where you're going to cut. There we go. And then you need to cut it out. Okay, so now I've got my triangle. Again, it doesn't look very shell-like, does it? So we're going to make it look more shell like now this is very important bit when you cut out your shell shape the pointy end is going to end up here so don't make it too narrow because we still want the fold because we want it to be like a shell now we need to glue the back of this to uh, the back of our crab so then we've got the shell over the top of our crab. And then you can add all of your design because don't forget, we need some eyes on there. We need some design on the shell. So you can also make it as extravagant a shell as you like. So it could be a very jazzy shell. Unfortunately, none of my crabs have got very jazzy shells, um, but hopefully, they will do one day. It's always nice to aspire to a jazzy shell. So I'm going to, I'm just going to draw some lines on mine so that you can see it. And you can obviously make your eyes, you can make your eyes stand out with some pipe cleaners or if you've got googly eyes, um, or I'm just going to draw mine on so that you get the idea of where the eyes are meant to go. And you can also, if you want to make your thumbs, which are meant to be the claws, you can either cut them out or you can um, draw on your pincers. There we go. Okay, so that's my finished hermit crab. And like I said, you can jazz it up as much as you like and you can even stick like diamantes or something on their shell or 
you can make this into a card and it could be like nice message in there for maybe someone that's helped you during lockdown. And here is another shelled mini beast. Um, you can see Pinky's got a little shy during lockdown um, because we haven't actually been to schools. Um, so uh, other than watching TV with me, which isn't quite as fun, um, he's been in his cage most of the time. Um, so when the snail pops out, and this is a giant African land snail, so don't be worried about finding ones these big in your garden. Um, the top two tentacles have got eyes on them. So if I try and try and get him to look at you, they're not very good at looking though. Um, they can only really see light and dark. So um, you may or may not be able to see his eyeball there. And the bottom two tentacles, they are more for smelling and for tasting. They're a bit more like our nostrils. And um, if you were lucky enough to find a snail outside, you can pick it up, no problem, because they don't have any teeth, so you don't need to worry about getting bitten. Instead of teeth, they instead have a very rough tongue, which is called a radula, and they have lots of little edges on it, which do look, and they are sometimes called teeth, um, but they basically just lick their food and just grind it down like that. And because they have made this shell on their back, they need to have lots and lots of calcium in their diet, um, just like us for our bones and our teeth. Um, so they don't get their calcium from yogurt or dairy like we do. Um, they get their calcium from the eggshells that I give them or the um, they're called cuttlefish bone. You might find them on the beach. They get those um, as well and they'll, they'll scratch away at those with their radula and then eat any calcium that they get from that to make their shell. And they grow their shell from this edge which means that it ends up in a lovely spiral. And we're going to try and make a spiral like that for our snail finger puppet. For starters, you're going to need to cut out a strip of paper. You can have it as wide as you like or as long as you like. Obviously, the longer it is, the curlier and bigger your shell is going to be on your snail. Then you need to find a pen or a pencil and we're going to curl with the coloured side underneath and we're going to curl and wrap our snail shells shell around the pen. So just keep rolling, just keep rolling, there we go. Okay, make sure it's nice and tight, give it a little scrunch. Okay, and then if you let go, we should have a nice curl going on. So you might need to, if you've chosen quite a thick pen like me, you might need to do it again with no pen, but it'll be easier this time. Okay, because then it'll make a much, much tighter shell. There we go. So now we've got our snail shell going on. All right. Obviously, you still have to use your imagination because it's not attached to our, sh our snail yet. And then you need to get your pipe cleaner and you need to fold it in half. Okay. And then the two ends sticking out, they're going to be your snail eyes. Okay. So we'll leave those bits out. So we want about a thumb length, not used. Right. And then get your finger, or you might need someone else to wrap it around your finger. And starting from the bit where we said we weren't going to use before then, you need to wrap it around your finger. Okay, and if your finger is smaller than mine, which hopefully it will be, you will have quite a lot of pipe cleaner there to play with. And then at the end with your snail's eyes, you need to make it so he's looking out. Okay. And you can give it a little bit of a, a twist if you want. Okay, so make sure it looks like your snail's alive. And then you need to take it off of your finger. This bit's very important because you don't want to glue your finger to the, the snail skin. And you need to get some glue. So if you're using PVA glue to stick your shell on, 
um, which is like your normal pretstick or the normal um, kind of sloppy white glue that you have at school, the runny glue, um, that will work, but it will just need to dry for a couple of hours before you start using it. I'm going to use a glue gun, which is obviously very hot, so someone else will need to do this if you're doing a glue gun. And you just stick your shell to the back of your finger bit, and you need to do the flappy bit on the back. And then if it's a bit too flappy for you, you can always add a little bit of glue on the inside as well. I don't know I want mine too flappy anyway. There we go. And then means you've got your lovely, and you can stick some googly eyes on there as well if you've got them. I just don't have any googly eyes at home. And then you've got your lovely finger puppet. And you can tell a little story about a snail. So thank you for joining us on another Wiggly World show. I hope you enjoy all of your makes. And if you get a chance to go out to the park or the garden, have a little look and see if you can find any mini beasts like these in your back garden or in where you live. Thanks a lot and take care and be nice and safe.